<laughs> Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Today's topic, to grow, we must create. This afternoon, we have two special guests, Dr. Manulani Alui Meyer and her sister, Ms. Meliana Alui Meyer. Dr. Manulani Meyer obtained her doctorate from Harvard by studying Hawaiian and via language history and the clear insights of Hawaiian mentors. She is an international keynote speaker who has published on the topic of native intelligence to quantum sciences, transformational and whole thinking. Manilani has been an associate professor of education at the University of Hawaii in Hilo and hosts to many creative community transformational education projects within and outside the university. She is an international evaluator of of indigenous PhDs and finds much connection within the healing insight of other indigenous scholar practitioners. She is currently the Director of Indigenous Education at UH West Oahu and inspired with many community initiatives in educational reform, food security, and prison transformation. Her sister, Ms. Meliana Meyer, artist, educator, and filmmaker, received her BA in design photography, winning the Borelli Arts Prize from Stanford University. When not making films, she continues teaching in the community as her commitment to the arts, Keiki and their families are a driving force in her life. She considers the work that she does around the state part of her mission to bring the arts to empower the people. Miliana's work can also be found in important collections in Hawaii, in the city and county collection of Honolulu, the Honolulu Academy of Arts, the East West Center, as well as the Hawaii State Art Museum with works in private collections both here and abroad. She is also a published author and illustrator. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what sister <laughs> love looks like. Yeah, yeah. Right, here, right here. This is it. This is sisterly love right hey, here. Hey, you know. Yeah, welcome, <laughs> Mandelana and Emiliana. I'm so happy to have you yeah, here. I'm so happy Hello. to be here. This yeah. is just so, I'm so excited about having both of you here at one place. The I'm first here. thing I wanted to start with congratulations on being on the cover of the Honolulu <laughs> magazine, Power of Ohana. Okay. Tell our ladies and gentlemen out there, first of all, what does Ohana mean in case yes. people do not know? And then, not only, not only that, I want to know about the Alui Meyer family. Give us your history. <laughs> okay, in a nutshell, take it away, sister. <laughs> <laughs> we love to put each other on, on the spot. So well, our family is dedicated to um, transformation of Hawaii through understanding and the practice of cultural Hawaiian values. And um, this article expresses that idea in the concept of ohana. Ohana is our Hawaiian word for family. But as we know um, and as we practice, our family is, is, is is an idea of strength, continuity, and, and not a nuclear sense. It's an extensive idea. In Hawaii, um, we are family. And this is what I understanding about um, being home in Honolulu after being 30 years away uh, in Hilo and Aotearoa. But um, that's why being with my sisters is actually life-changing and affirming to the concept of Ohana. Also that? to uh, um, understand that there's a lot of metaphor in our language. So uh, oha is also a part of a plant. And that notion of na, ohana, it has to do with all the little rootlets that are around kalo. And it's a beautiful way to understand a deeper message for belonging or of belonging, that we are all a part of something larger. So it's actually, it's very poetic for me in terms of that. And, uh, and, and family is just, as Manu said, not just nuclear, but, um, but is extended. So yes, we are indeed family. And it's really humanity we're talking about, you know. Yeah. You know, when I was reading about the power of Ohana, what struck me uh, in the article, and I said, how could they get all of you together? And something that you mentioned, you said, we tr always try to get along. 
<laughs> oh my God, that's a practice. Do I get to tell them what our mother said on you know her her Please her, do. her last words to all of us were? Two, I have two things to say, and I was thinking, well, maybe she's going to tell us to go to church. That's an easy one, right? Because it's only like something that's very uh, routine. But no, she said, take care of one another and be kind to each other. It's like, oh no, that's really a practice. So when, when she said that to us, it was like, we can okay, do that. we can do that. Can do but that. it is a practice. Mm -hmm. So don't, let's not kid ourselves. It's good hard work. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's so much easier to be kind to one it is. another. It, it is really a practice. Is. It's beautiful, actually. So how did this happen? Well, just give me a quick story. There's so many amazing <laughs> families in this there magazine. There are. But <laughs> you, you ladies, the Aluli Meyer family is on the cover. Mm. That I says know. a lot. I know. <laughs> Not quite. Well, well I'm, I haven't read the article yet, so you've oh, got the you I know, the you got the first copy. copy. So we, we, have never, the first yeah, we never even looked but, at it. But yeah. we have been dedicated our whole lives to the, the work of our grandfather, Noah Webster Aguli, that, we, that the commitment that our Ohana has to the love of land and the love of our people yeah. And um, has been infused in us through our commitment and through our mother and through just all the efforts of our cousins. There's Emmett Aluli on the cover, and he has helped um, stop the bombing of Koholabi. There's Mihana, our cousin, who has kept poor Mana, the music of our of our of her um, mother, alive. Her mother was a living treasure for yeah. our people yeah. with over 500 um, songs beloved to Hawaii. There's Elena, our cousin, who's uh, another musician who is, has been keeping the uh, Kanikapila spirit alive forever. Miley, of course, our sister, <laughs> Native Books in Nami Hawaii. She is a unbelievably beloved um, um, uh, publisher source of, and inspiration source of inspiration and very much. And Luana, our younger to sister, community. is the um, she's an educator at Punahou, and um, she's been beloved there for over 15 years, I believe. And we have two more. Um, Malia, our eldest, who's passed, and um, actually three more, and beloved Moana, uh, Manu's twin sister, who lives in Portland, and then our brother, Maui, who's also up in Oregon, who's an entrepreneur. But yeah, it's a, it's, it's a lot of energy. This is a. It is. Well, but yeah, before we move on, people. this is another thing I love, and I'll read this to you. And it says something about uh, mm. Dr. Emmett, your uh, Dr. Emmett Alui. Right. Said. And I had the uh, pleasure of speaking with him. After the six women cousins finish a rousing wake up Hawaii, for emphasis, they repeat a verse Preserve the beauty that surrounds you now, protect the land and, and spirit, spirit of oh, aloha. aloha. <laughs> then, with a fist bump, they say, You already get yeah. a fist bump. <laughs> so, just tell me about the, that phrase. Yes. Was well, our incredible aunt and all of the energy and the kuleana of people, all of us collectively who love the land, who love this place we all get to call home. And it's a very special thing. I mean, she's our mother. Mm. The land is that which feeds us. So when we talk about taking care of her, it's because we believe she's animate and alive. And it's, a, some, it's something culturally that is the deepest essence of who we are. Right. Yeah. Well, we're going to move on and talk about Ho'o. Tell me. Ho'o Ulu. Ho'o Ulu. <laughs> I love that. Ho'o Ulu. Our time of becoming. And we do have a picture of the cover of your book, and Ray's going to put that up. And while he's putting the cover of that book, and I, what I loved about it, you did speak about your sister in the book. And one thing I love is dedicated to. Uh, your eldest sister, Malia, and you said that Malia taught us the following five truths. Mm -hmm. During her time of transformation, do only what you are led to do. Mm -hmm. Don't judge others. Love people for who they are. Forgive, play more. <laughs> and what I want to know about, there's the cover of the book, it's absolutely beautiful. Not only are you the writer, so we have an author here and we have an artist. You did the illustrations mm -hmm. for the book. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you collaborate on that? Wow. Easily. <laughs> oh, for <laughs> sure. Okay. No, no, no. Seriously. Really? Absolutely. Money will tell so you about tell this. Tell us about the cover, Melly, because blue it's is the ancient beautiful. color of love. And when, when, that, when she showed me that cover, I cried 
So, Millie, tell us what well, that is about. Well, actually, it's important for you all to know that this was a, a place where fresh water flowed, the Mulivai um, in um, Mauna mm -hmm. at um, Ulupo. Mm -hmm. So it's where it's, it was a freshwater s stream, actually, or, or pu you know, Punawai. Punawai, excuse me, I don't mean Mulivai, but Punawai. Mm -hmm. And um, it was high noon, <laughs> so I'm getting the reflection of the sun. And then there's a double image of also the kupu kupu fern because I, I just enjoy doing a collage. So it's this notion of growth, duh, ho'ulu, which is what ulu means is to grow. And ho'ulu, ho'o is a gerund that really cause, means to cause things to grow. So that's this incredible thing that has to do with land, water, light, and spirit. But I want to also so. say that ho'ulu is one of the three um, types of um, spirit possession in Hawaiian culture. And this spirit possession is something when you are possessed in this pat in this way you are doing your dancing in ways you've never danced before you're writing in ways you've re never written before yes yeah, so it's are not a negative it's a not a, a negative positive way yeah. so i believe we need to be possessed in a positive way in order to get to our next phase of transformation in hawaii and and i think our time of becoming is now yeah and you know we artists would call that being in flow i mean you know you hmm. sort of like and dervishes do it so the, that notion of possession carries a negative it connotation in other cultures, yeah. but not for you yeah. and not for me. Yeah. So it's important that we're, we're actually having a, a discussion about culture as well. So that's yeah. important. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, yeah. uh, when I was reading through the book, I think that whomever's coming to visit Hawaii or visiting here, this should be a much a uh, must-read book because it has a Hawaiian language glossary. <laughs> okay. You know, because when you're talking to people, you know, Aina, Aloha, you know, you're, you're giving us the meanings of these words. I mean, so you can feel a part of as soon as you land here. Nice. And we call Hawaii, I call Honolulu the bus stop to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. We want to borrow that. But you, know, okay. but you know, glossaries are really important because they are, are not shortcuts, but they're and they're not even cheat sheets, but they're opportunities to go, oh, this is a basic. This is a baseline of things that you should know. So, you know, I think a glossary for many of us would be a really good thing about a lot of things. You in, know? in Hawaii, though, we really want people to understand the depth of, I, our, of ideas and the passion of our thinking is found in multiple interpretations at multiple levels, literal, multiple, and even the secret. So this book, hopefully, um, is meant to engage you to to in stimulate your secret understanding of what loving really means because aloha is our true intelligence here in Hawaii. We know like Brad. But okay, but hey, <laughs> hey. And and so you're not supposed to toot your horn, but <laughs> beep beep <laughs> beep beep. Okay. No, but think Make about it. it. <laughs> but think about it. It's really important. We're going to take a quick short break. Okay. But when we come back, there's a statement here that you said. Manu, get rid of the belief, I mean really get rid of it, that we are somehow inferior. So when we come back, <coughs> not only when we want to talk about the other books yeah. that you both have touched and written and, and you have put your illustrations on, we want to come back and talk about that. All right, stay with okay. us right here. We'll be right back. This is Sister Power. All right, we're back. 
<laughs> Welcome back to Sister Power and our topic for today, To Grow, We Must Create. And we were talking about your book and we left off with this question that I love. Get rid of the belief, I mean really get rid of it, that we are somehow inferior. And the reason why that touched me, because the African American uh, culture, you know, we have that uh, word attached to us yeah. uh, being inferior and if we know our history meaning the African Americans um, we have invented the cell phone <laughs> with disposable diapers the souls and issue traffic signals and oh, it can go on and, and, on, on, and, on, and on. on and on so tell me about that word inferior with this book yeah, and alert to us. James Baldwin was the one that said I will never let anyone describe my experience again and, and that was inspiring to me because when you stop having or listening to other people's interpretation of your own life, then you begin to grow and ask yourself the question, who am I really? And therefore, who can we be collectively? And, and you know, he, he was inspiring to me. Yes. He did it against all odds. He, he said, I'm going to defy my own reality. And once you start doing that, the, it's over. The change is already here. There's, and when you have or just indigenous begun, people, yeah, exactly. And when you have native people saying, "Hey, you guys, we can do this better," you know what I mean? We really can. We can do this better, and that's what I mean. It's our clarity that's up to bear, not anyone else's. We have to stop feeling inferior. I have to stop feeling you're right. inferior. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, and you know this whole notion of equity is. Um, I mean, we're all human beings, and so the capacity for us to love is is where we, we shine. And this notion of in inferior, it's like, by whose standards? Mm. You know, and I think that's an important question because inferior to what? <laughs> and by what gauge? So um, this, this book is transformational for so, so many of us because it really defines and it goes deep, more deeply into issues and things that we all want more clarity about. Another one here you have several but I love this one understand that words have mana oh. <laughs> break it down break it down <laughs> break and, it down and talk talk to them about the um, olelo no ea because that's where that comes from ika olelo olo ika yeah. olelo make there is life in our language and our words there is death in our language and our words mm. so our, our ike kupuna the knowledge of our elders is still with us through that um, proverb and it basically means watch your thinking and be a person of integrity in how you articulate that because that articulation is actually linked to, to history and to the future thousands of years beyond us. So be very careful of your words. We're flippant with our words nowadays. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we use words poorly. We, we use, we're, we're, I use words and I can, I can improve my speech by improving my mind. And I think that's, that idea refers to and that. And your intentionality in terms of um, in those words they are they are so potent so it actually is is an opportunity in our mo'olelo and um, olelo no yao to to be cognizant of how we carry ourselves because for us as um, there's there is mana there is energy in the words especially as you oli or pray or sing and um, you know, there's a communing that, that goes on. So the, the, it's really an important thing for us to always be aware of. And I think the millennials need to hear that. <laughs> I mean, they're saying any and everything on social yeah. media. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and they yeah. will definitely yeah. come back to haunt you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. write it on a yeah. piece of paper, get it out, yeah. and throw it away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do that myself. I, I know. Did you hear that? That's good advice. Good advice. Okay. That's very good advice. Let's move on, and I want to talk about your father's book. What would you leave? Tell me about that book. What would you leave by Harry K. Meyer? Yeah. And illustrations by you. I know it was so much fun. Seriously, this actually is a book that was written, and I, I should read what, what what this says. It's beautiful. It says our father wrote this book in 1959, following the birth of his fourth and fifth children and Moana, they were of a number that eventually grew to seven. Throughout, um, thoughtful about the future, our father set out his legacy on paper. He took the time to challenge us creatively and lovingly in his writings, hoping that we would in turn come to appreciate the mysteries he spoke of in this book, in our world. The, this gift is to be shared, and its universal appeal is what every father gives his child or hopes to. 
life and the hope of a better and more meaningful tomorrow. So this is like really um, a little Bible for us. We mm. kind of love it that way. Yeah. So our father is, um, for lack of a better word, he's opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> to a say poet that. opinionated. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a very full, complete work that um, takes us through um, ideas that he has for all of us and actually for our children and their children's children. So He'd it's a have wonderful piece. slogans <laughs> written over our doorways as we walk through them. For instance, through these doors pass the most beautiful girls in the world. Oh my how could and, you be inferior and, 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 with and that? Exactly. No. True to your teeth or they will be false to you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean really we had these my things. My favorite all over is the place. always be curious, you know. Yeah. That was that was oh, how, in the kitchen. Kissing don't last, but cookery do. <laughs> <laughs> and you're an excellent cook too. That's another she thing. Is. Well, you know that's 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 part of the art. That's part of the um, the growth and the and you know growing every day to create to make meaning in our lives. So that's yeah. why to to grow we must create is the name of our show here with yes. you because we have to grow, and in order to grow as both. Um, community members and as individuals in this very, very chaotic world we're in, we must create. Create with our minds, create with our hands, but create with our languaging. So creation, destruction, creation, destruction. Let us create together. That's yeah. This is why I <laughs> admire authors and artists, because you start with a blank sheet of paper, correct, and then you create, and you educate, and you motivate, and you inspire. Where does that come from? <laughs> you know, it comes from a need. Mm -hmm. It comes from a need to be heard and to find voice to interior ideas and things that really come from other places, as in from our kupuna, from our, our mentors from our kumu because I can I can brag about um, all of the kumus I've had in my life whether at university or in Ike Hawaii and they are are so numerous so Manu and I between the two of us we could have a whole show and just talking about our beloved teachers we will yeah because I'll tell you something without our teachers there's very little that we can do on our own because work that we do creatively is all about not only growing ideas but growing courage and growing insight so it's not just growth it's actually how those ideas connect and then actually create other things you know I mean that's what I see it there's is. a process called koho ia in Hawaiian koho is to choose ia is the no choice so it means choice no choice Melly thinks she's being asked to to illustrate this book but actually it's been asked from her for long ago because mm. of her creative spirit she was the only one that could do it in, in this kind of quality so that type of responsibility, that kuleana, is, a, is, not an, is not an obligation negative. It's an obligation positive. You know, that... And that's what we I feel. That. I know, oh, an oh, obligation that's positive. That's a good one. I, yeah. I, yeah, right. I'm going to write that down <laughs> yeah. later. Yeah. And let's just move forward with another book, Hawaiian Charter School Book. Okay, where, the, where do oh, we start? Oh, these beautiful, yeah. gorgeous, <laughs> colorful books. We'll have to brag about all of our colleagues. Okay, I okay. Want to hear about it. Okay, so here's the deal. I get to work with extraordinary teachers, Kumu, and their beloved children who are motivated and compelled to do incredibly good work. So this is a recent publication from Waiau this year. So we get, but, but it was a project, and I, and I told um, Kumu Lahela Igarta, I said, you know, Kumu, this is a great idea, and it's going to take time because excellence just doesn't happen. So this just came out this year, and it's spectacular, and for all sorts of reasons. I wish we had more time about it to speak. This book actually um, came out of a charter school in, at Kamakau. So this is Samuel Manaya Kalani Kamakau. Mm -hmm. And I love to work in charters because there's such need to do art everywhere, but there's such incredibly compelling need in, in our community. Yes. And this was a book that was written because there was no literature for children. Mm -hmm. So they wrote the story and they did the illustrations. The children? Yeah. But, but you know, I get, I get to coach and, and, and help them um, do, <coughs> do their work. And Kamehameha Schools helped us with that, my beloved colleague, Nikki Mashiro. And this book is a series of things that came from um, Kanuoka Aina. And this is one of three or four that got published this year. This girl was so talented, but they didn't recognize her talent. They didn't know she had talent. So when I saw her drawings, I went, oh my God, do you realize how, how extraordinary our children are? <laughs> totally. In so many ways. And then this is a, a, a piece that um, dear Sam um, Noia Warner 
he did a whole series of these things. And this, again, was another student that I supported. This is his work. So this is everyone else's work. And as a teacher, as we both are, you have to be a coach in what you love mm -hmm. so that other others can do what you, what you um, inspire. And Manu is a, a fantastic coach, and so I just get to teach art, but I love to do what I like to do. And these are all, by the way, these are all uh, bilingual readers. Did you know, you know I did see this, yeah. a bilingual tale. Yeah. Uh, pronounce so it beautiful. It. Yeah. He said, um, bye. He ka'au no hao vahine lawa o mehianu. So these are all in Hawaiian. Gorgeous. I mean, look at these. I mean, they're just beautiful. beautiful. They are. And each of these children... And groups of children have stories, and they're great stories more later. But this is what we get to do. So we're also trying to um, practice our language in whatever capacity we can. It has to be lifted out beyond our universities. It must be practiced in the small and large ways yeah. in, our, in our communities, in our singing, in our bookmaking. So hika olalo ola, let us uh, um, nourish each other with our ideas and our, our mother tongue, that we are only one generation away from speaking. Mm. Yeah, man. I like that. Yeah, and one generation of, of loss and, and, and forced assimilation. So, you know, we're really interested in also speaking truth to, to the, the powers that be because it's important to um, let folks know what, what the history of this place is and how we intend as educators and um, believers of pono, of righteousness, to, to help our community to heal and to to really learn how to thrive. You know, it's not just enough to survive anymore. We want mm. everyone to, because we've had such opportunity. So we, we intend and always want to model that, all of those good things. So truth for us is the ability to actually um, share with you the idea that we, we, we are in a transformational phase right now. And the, the collaboration that you offer us in so many levels, it's an opportunity Sharon, just to is be here. really, really Sharon, vital. Thank you because um, diversity is a strength for us. This is why Hawaii will change the planet, it's because mm. we really believe that we are the same differently. See, we don't stop when we are the same, we're not. We are the same differently. That, that kind of holistic thinking uh, it comes from our ike kupuna, and that is, you know, we paint different red because we want to learn from it. Okay, we don't I like know. that. Come on. Well, we're, <laughs> the, uh, time is almost over, oh, no. and I just wanted to thank you both. And in 10 seconds or less, tell us exactly what, when people come to visit Hawaii, what do you want them to leave with? Oh, nice. Melly, you first. Junk in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha is our true intelligence. That's what I want. Um, people to, 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 to feel, to experience through our people, through the geography of Hawaii, and through the love that they can then take home and amplify around the world. Aloha is what we have to offer the planet. Oh, I love this. Did I know, you want and how to can you beat that? Um, we're not beating anything, we're just supporting each other. And I can tell you something, not only aloha, but um, aloha aina as well. So the, the extension of that is to care for not only the land, but to understand the reciprocity that we need to hold for each other. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> Sister Power. We yeah. must do this again. Yeah. Oceans of aloha, Thank you, peace, and love. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This is